<laughs> That's new. out here because hi I'm Woody you're trespassing I'm sorry we didn't mean to intrude this lane is for residents and you obviously don't belong here obviously you never mind Rach come on Are you related are you all right yes thanks I wasn't talking to you huh. <laughs> Yeah, everything's fine, thanks. Gardening. This is a first. <laughs> I should go get my camera. Thanks. I hope this is a good omen. Mm. <laughs> Come on, Carla. This place is okay for now. For now? No, you agreed. I bought the place because my architect estimates that I can get the work done within six months, get it back on the market, and realistically turn a 20% profit. Then we bought the house, not you. Then we can buy the place of our dreams. Just maybe not here in Zombieville. This is perfect. We're staying. It's perfect for development. Look, I don't want to fight. I just came out here and meet our new neighbors, the Atex. He's a nice guy. Great kids, too. She says. <laughs> Thanks, so. Anytime. What? You need someone to sort your sorry life out? Sally? No. We've got nothing in common. What? Hi, Woody. I just met your new neighbour, Michael. He's compiling an interesting property portfolio and money's no object. I like him already. He's married, Van. Aren't they all? Hi, Susie. Hi. Hi, Van. Lovely, isn't it? Mr. Atak, I hope you're not hosting a rave here. The first name's Woody. And no, I won't be hosting a rave. I work as a projectionist for Moviola. Showing films at the Village Hall? Yeah, venues all over the region, actually. Pretty much anywhere that doesn't have a cinema. I saw the posters. I'll try and make the next movie. Yeah. And the organisers are always looking for helpers. I'm very busy at the moment. You collect gnomes? An inheritance. Do you like them? No, they're tacky. Like your plastic pots. You were in my woodland earlier. Michael said it was okay. 
I didn't do any damage, I promise. May I see those plans? Good morning, yeah. No way. There aren't going to be any extensions, extra buildings or anything else added to this property, which is half mine. Go! It was an accident. Jesus! That's plant number three you've damaged. Next time your ball comes over, I'll stick this into it. Give me that, you lunatic. Oh, I'm mad, but don't confuse that with lunacy, and that's his fault. You don't need any bloody help from him. I'm not going to talk to you if you can't be polite. Fine. You only talk down to us commoners anyway. I like to think I can get along with most folk, but... In your dreams. And what do you know? I know that you're a snob and that you're arrogant. I am not, you brat. Yes, you are, you anorexic witch. Get out of here. Hey, can I borrow a fiver? Fat chance. Why don't you ask the gargoyle next door if you can do some odd jobs for her? I heard that. Shit. By the way, I'm not anorexic. I know. I'm sorry. So much perfume. My mum hated freesias. You must miss her. Not really. So you've been mum since she left? Before I left school, I was one of the few in my class whose parents hadn't split up. Unreal. The world is going mad. I understand you're at college. What are you studying? Video production. Once I finish the course, I want to make martial art movies and training DVDs. Wing Chun Kung Fu is my hobby. <laughs> well, I'm glad we never got into a fight. So am I. If I ever get to heaven, I hope it smells like this little patch. Did my dad tell you he used to be a training gardener with the National Trust in his youth? No way. Yeah, you wouldn't think it to look at the state of the back garden, but house takes priority. Um, do you fancy a walk? Sure. Is Woody seeing anyone else? No. Sally at the local pub loves him to bits, but he's not interested. He hasn't seen anyone since Mum left. He's always too busy. Working or writing. How sad. We'll have to fix him up with someone. Got any single sisters? <laughs> Two. Both younger, both divorced. But if you thought they were like me, you'd probably run a mile. I don't know. Giselle is a hypochondriac and Antonia is a kleptomaniac. So what type of yak are you then? Pyromaniac? 
nymphomania? <laughs> no, I'm the only normal one in the entire family, believe me. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry we got off to a bad start when you moved in. I was way out of line and I want to make amends. So, how about a joint party for Cassie and Connor? I mean, their birthdays are so close and we could have a barbecue. Cool. We'll have to make sure any barbecue food is well cooked because he's a real fuss pot. No problem. What's that obsession called where you're washing your hands all the time and forever cleaning surfaces? Being hygienic? <laughs> no. <laughs> Hang on. Ace to base. All right. We're surrounded. Request immediate evacuation. Coordinates? Okay, locked and loaded. ETA 10 minutes. Hi there. Hi. I could have called a cab. It's not a problem. Jump in. What the hell? Smoke that, dickhead. I want five minutes warning before you start another fire. I've got to rewash everything, it stinks. Connor, dinner. Your eyes off the gargoyle while I'm away. I've seen you looking at her. There are plenty of women out there. So get off your ass and socialise. I haven't got time. Make time. I won't be here forever to help you with the housework. Go get a wife. Nasty little hobbit. How about a deal? Leave Connor at Nan's and take Sally out. In return, I'll do all the ironing when I get back. Yes? No. Listen, take care. I will. You know me. <laughs> By the way, I've heard Carla's husband, Michael, is sleeping with Vanessa. Are you here for the whole week? Yep. you could make it. So, how have you been? Good, thanks. <laughs> oh, um, I heard your grandfather used to work on the estate. Yeah, he was actually born in the old lodge when it was tied accommodation. <laughs> I remember when I was a kid, he used to bow and take his hat off every time the squire walked past. Which didn't seem right to me. It's kind of neat that you ended up buying the place. Yeah, an overpriced piece of family history. <laughs> um, Look, as I'm your landlady... No, you're not. I bought the place outright, with access rights. Did your lawyer talk to you about the ground rent? Yeah. Well, then I hope that he or she pointed out that you pay that to us. <laughs> so for an extra few pounds per annum, you expect me to doff my cap every time you walk past? No, but under the terms of your contract, you're obliged to keep your part of the grounds neat and tidy. Well, it's a pity you didn't enforce that with your previous tenants, isn't it? Well, they'd gone before we'd moved in. When you make a start on your backyard, I could help a little. I mean, you're obviously far too busy to do much gardening. Obviously. And your weeds are spreading, so if you wouldn't mind, I could come around and do the chore myself. Well, actually, I do mind. Why? Snowy happens to be very partial to dandelion leaves. 
and it saves me a fortune on rabbit food. You called a grey rabbit snowy? Yes. Anyway, we have made a start. And round here, we call it a garden, not a yard. You've got a lot of work to do before you can call it a garden. And on the subject, your oversexed passion fruit is wrapping its out-of-control limbs around everything in reach. <laughs> what do you feed it with, Viagra? Well, oh, could you either move it away or give it a trim, please? When I get the chance. Oh, hopefully that'll be soon. Hopefully I can be cloned so I can get all of my jobs done. We'll learn to delegate. We'll learn to keep your nose out, Cruella. Whatever, Mr. Misery. <laughs> I know you're a busy guy, but I gave you a week and I'm within my rights. And the rest of your honeysuckle's infested with black fly, so could you sort it out, pretty please? Anything for peace and quiet. You're so obliging. Yes? I have something for you. What? I have something for you. Thanks, but I don't approve of bonsai. Well, I wasn't seeking your approval. It's just not natural. I'll take a hike. In the mountains you find bonsai naturally stunted by nature and... There aren't any mountains around here, wise guy. No, but there's a forest. Without a single mountain. But where a variety of animals graze on specimens exactly like these, thus keeping them in a stunted state. I've cut them back every couple of years to keep the common clear. We rescued these ones. And by the way, is that a bay tree you've got next to your front door? Yes, it's for cooking. Well, if you keep it in the same pot and you keep pinching it back, then to all intents and purposes it's a bonsai, yes? Are you going to plant your trees somewhere where they can grow to full height? Eventually, when I find somewhere for them. Well, I'll see if I can find a spot here in my woods, if you like. To replace the damaged Icentra. I told Connor not to plant any plants anymore. You didn't need to. This isn't Spectabilis, is it? No, it's Bacchanal, actually. It's very pretty. I haven't heard of that before. Thank you, I'll read up on it. I bet you haven't heard of this before either. Vanilla lady, smell it. Mmm, wow. Spectacular, isn't it?
Vanessa has found this amazing site in Cornwall. Now I could develop it privately and make a fortune. Just take a look. Go for it. See, the thing is, sales in the Scottish development should pick up soon, and when they do... We're we not selling, remortgaging, or offering this house up as any kind of collateral. Go and find another source of funding. If you only knew how much precious time gets wasted chasing funds. I don't care. End of topic. Well, just take a look. No. Please. Hey, how'd it go? Really good. How is everything here? Yeah, fine. Except Michael's taking another one of the goblins. Childish. But you hate them anyway. That's not the point. They were grands. Anyway, I won't let him bait me. I won't rise to it. <laughs> good for you. Outsmart him. Can I bring a friend for dinner? Yeah, sure. As long as you don't mind sharing yours. Salad. Oh, I've even managed to conjure up chocolate pudding and sauce. Ellie's favourite. I didn't say Ellie was coming. Hi, Mr. Atak. I'm Darren. Be nice. Good to meet you, Darren. Take a seat. So, how do you like chocolate pudding? Love chocolate pudding. <laughs> He's not sleeping here. I mean it, Rach. I didn't say he was. What's that? Guess. Well, we don't have any porcupines around here. Then they must be for hedgehogs. How does a porcupine have sex? <laughs> Very carefully. That one's older than you. Hmm, cheeky. So I take it you're a professional woodworker. It's just a hobby. Well, he works very skilled. A compliment. Well, I'm lost for words now. <laughs> it's the first time for everything, I suppose. So what was your first piece? A very bloody owl. I punched a small chisel right through my finger and pinned it to the wood. I've got weak at the knees. <sighs> I have that effect on people. <laughs> well, if they're as squeamish as me, I'm not surprised. So why'd you make such a large dragon? I just worked with what was there in the wood. And Cassie had a fascination with dragons, so I made it for her. It kept me busy. What's the matter? Our little girl, Amy, died last year. I'm so sorry. How? She was a chronic asthmatic and she had an allergic reaction. Thinking, what if I'd been more vigilant? You can't beat yourself up over things like that. Anyway, I gotta go. Things to do. Okay. Look, if you ever want to talk about it, I might take you up on that sometime.
Hi. Uh, Carlos says this is down payment in exchange for digging up your uh, daffodils. Dandelions. Daffodils aren't weeds. <laughs> yep. Whatever. But um, you know, we're happy to supply you with a ton of this stuff. So. It won't be necessary. I'll do some more weeding this week. Thanks. Um. Look, we uh. We both know that my wife can be a little temperamental, and her garden is... Uh, Sanctuary, right? Exactly. And you obviously see where I'm coming from, so... Obviously, yeah. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, gotta keep the women happy. So. Speaking of which, how's Vanessa these days? Vanessa? Fine. I, uh... I hear you guys go way back. Sort of. Yeah. I've known her for a long time. She used to be quite nice before she turned to the dark side and became an estate agent. <laughs> they, uh, they just provide a service. They? I was told you were an estate agent. Not exactly. But I do work for a company that deals in global real estate. So. Dad, phone for you. In just a second. <sighs> Look, we both gotta go. I'll, uh... I'll say hi to Vanessa for you. Does your marriage actually mean anything to you? You, uh, you want to clarify that? I saw you and Vanessa in the pub the other day. You seemed very intimate. I hear that you like to keep a very close eye on her. That's unhealthy. And trust me, she's not interested in you. Also, if I ever see you snooping around Dad, my yard again... Fine. Just a second. And I suggest you think long and hard before you cause any grief. Because Carl's been through a lot. Listen, I think... No. You don't think or speak. Because if you do, I will fuck you up. On my way over, Rover. That went well. Big mouth. What's wrong? Okay, I'm fine now. Well, you don't seem fine. You... Well, I am, okay? Okay, fine. You think I'm wacko? Now I see why your wife left you. Damn it. I'm sorry. I heard she... You heard she ran off with another guy and lives abroad? Correct. She also drained all of our bank accounts and left us penniless. Wait! This isn't the real me, Woody. I came off antidepressants a while back and I'm snappy. I'm sorry. I think there might be a stranger in the house. He's not a stranger, he's your husband. He's away. No, don't phone anyone. Just come in for a minute? You've got to be joking. A couple of years ago, somebody was murdered in a house not two miles from here. They never found the killer. It's probably just my imagination. Could we just check, please? Nothing. Nothing. I see you go running most days. Mm-hmm. That's a good way of relieving stress. I've never seen you drive the rust bucket. Our car is a rust bucket? Hmm. Well, it's manual and I prefer automatics. I can't even work out the sat nav. <laughs> anyway, I'm not confident enough to go on an English roads, period. You should take some lessons. 
I don't think I'm ready yet. Look, Woody, I really hate what I said to you just now. I was out of line. I never used to be so uptight. You've had a traumatic time recently, I know. I've sure had a bad few years. Anyway, we're both late for the school pickups. Could I hit your ride, please? Sure. We're going to have to go around the back, though. The bottom road's flooded again. Soundtrack too. Did you ever come across the BBC audio version of Lord of the Rings? No. Well, then you've missed a treat. So, how can we marry the Black Rider? <laughs> He's more of a ranger. He wanders the world, but he doesn't know why. He just has to touch down in the US once in a while, then he's off again. I guess the pace of life is very different over here for you Americans. I'm Canadian. Sorry. <laughs> Michael was born on the wrong side of the border. Right now, this is just what the doctor ordered. What, the, uh, the quiet English countryside? Mm -hmm. Speaking of which... A present. Thank you. It's a picture. I took it up in your woods. So, if it was up to you, would you stay? Saw a point. I think I would put down roots almost anywhere right now. But I do love England. I've never seen such a diversity of gardens and architecture anywhere else. Have you ever been to Canada? No, but I'd love to be able to afford an autumn trip one year. I thought it's beautiful. It sure is. Thank you. So, do you think your husband's restless because of the loss of your child? No. He's always been like it. He's always searching for opportunities. He was talking about Eastern Europe recently. If I'm not careful, we'll probably end up in China. <laughs> Everyone settles in the end. His parents didn't. Not until they retired, anyhow. I've seen the world and I'm very grateful, but the novelty's worn off. I've also got other things to think about now. Don't you like my cake, Connor? If God made cakes, it'd be exactly like that. <laughs> well, help yourself to some chocolates. Cheers. Hi, guys! Hey, honey. Guess you win? I'm getting my ass kicked. Oh, sweet. I thought you were away. Oh, I was. But now I'm back. Now, hey, thanks for uh, keeping my wife company. Hey, relax. I know you're just a friendly guy like me.
Happy birthday, buddy. makes our little present to Cassie seem insignificant. He's loaded. It's probably an excuse to play with the thing himself. <laughs> <laughs> Adds flavour, huh? It tells everyone in the village you're hosting a barbecue and it makes him jealous. <laughs> can I get for you, my friend? I'll eat anything. Well, I'll bring you a bunch of stuff and then you can choose. Woody? I'm fine, thanks. Do you need a hand? No, nope, it's all under control. <laughs> Back in a minute. Phone's loose. Oh, I had to wait for him to buy down though, Richard. Do you like this place? It's really cool. And I've got three new friends at school now. That's nice. I was dreaming about Amy. Before the Phantom woke me up. Were you? Yeah. She was happy. Do you dream about her? Not so far. I wish I could. I want to get back to sleep now. Maybe see her again. Okay, sweetie. You snuggle up. You gonna buy something exotic? Mm, possibly some cheerful formiums. Sundowner. You get green, cream and red all on the same leaf. So, have you come to buy a flamethrower for your jungle? Yeah, I thought I might get some weed killer to attack those horrible excuses for plants you've got in your borders. When are you going to brighten them up? Give me a break. I've got so much to do. I'll show you some pictures of what my place looked like a year ago and then you'll get off my case. You should learn to delegate. <laughs> How are you doing today? I feel terrific. How's it going with your writing? Yeah, fine. Is it a novel? No, it's just our own personal family history. When will it be finished? <laughs> Probably never. It's kind of an ongoing project. Um, can I see it sometime? You can proofread it if you like. <laughs> I'd love to. <laughs> Are there any juicy scandals? Oh, lots. <laughs> <laughs> lots of war stories too, and a, a murder in 1866, and there's even a haunting. <laughs> I wouldn't know where to start with my own family tree. Although my dad's parents were English, they're from Lancashire. Well, that's where you start. I'll give you a hand if you like. You ask him a few more details. Great. Do you believe in ghosts? Nah. So did he walk or drive here? Walked. Look, 
We pick the kids up in about an hour from now. You give me a hand with this shopping list, I'll give you a lift home. You got yourself a deal, mister. Oh, and look out for any bargains while you're at it. Like decent plant pots? Nah, can't afford them. Also, well, in a crash, you, uh, you got a better chance of survival in a bigger car. It's just basic physics, you know? So you, you lose a little on fuel, but you gain, you gain extra protection for your family. Why are we in here? Are you pregnant? Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Are you in a rush? No, why? Well, how about a shower for tea? I showered already. Oh, come on, let's have some fun. Fun? You don't want fun. You want another baby. Maybe it was never meant to be. Oh, just like settling here was never meant to be, huh? I haven't transformed this garden so we can, can just sell up and move once more. No way, not this time. Maybe it is meant to be. I'm pregnant again. I found out weeks ago, but I was too worried to tell you. And is it a boy or...? It's too early to say. Thank you, Carla. Get on the phone and get the guys down here.
Okay. Thanks. Bye. How was your trip? I just spoke to a tree preservation officer and you can't cut a road through the orchard. Then we're going through the other side. Look, the banks aren't lending. So my projects are stuck in limbo. But we can secure our kids' future by building a few houses here at a time. But there's, there's more than enough land to... I need to be going into labor, although... Oh, shit, I'm sorry, you okay? <laughs> oh, yes. You should see your face. <laughs> yeah, got me. I love the fact the farmer puts produce out and trusts people to leave the right money. Well, there are still a few honest people around, you know. But not your ex-wife? Was she really a crook? Well, just left enough pretty much all of the money from the bank accounts, but I got the kids, so I don't care. You also have the lodge now. Yeah, that was nothing to do with her, though. My parents knew how much I loved the place, so they made a few sacrifices. I was told Vanessa helped, too. Yeah, she got me a deal before it came on the open market. Well, we would have bought it if... Ugh, I feel sick. I'll take the eggs. I'd hate you to vomit on them. No, it's OK. It's passed. So, why didn't you just stay put to save disrupting your kids? <laughs> That's right coming from you. I only moved a few miles and you moved thousands. Mm -hmm. You got me. I did. Anyway, I couldn't bear to stay around the old place. You'll fall in love again. Maybe. I was betrayed too. How was that? You want specifics? <laughs> okay. Well, not long after we were married, he'd disappear for ages. He always had an excuse ready, and I could never pin anything on him. And then one day, I heard him singing. What? You mean the tune? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. It doesn't matter. Anyway, he wasn't far away, next door in fact. So I go around, politely knock on the door, wait, but there's no answer. So there he is upstairs singing, but now it's a duet with a female our middle-aged neighbour. Oh, I remember. It was Roxanne by the police. I used to love that track. Anyway? Anyway, I go around the back and there's an empty champagne bottle on the patio along with some of his clothes and hers. So, I follow the voices and the trail of clothes through the open door upstairs. I find them in the bathroom and she's bent over a basin whilst he's washing her hair. They're both as drunk as skunks and naked. Oh dear. He swears they never did anything wrong. But he's behaved himself since? No. He cheated on me for sure when we were in Scotland. So, uh, what else did you find out about Woody? What's to know? He's an open book. You're opposite. An open book? Really? Whereas you're always plotting and scheming. Plotting? You mean planning. And I'm spontaneous. And I'm full of surprises. And you used to like my qualities. You're still full of surprises and secrets. Then me and the woodsman have got a lot in common. Although, of course, 
I don't have a track record with the local cops. No. Right, so? I recently heard that he's got a very creepy past. Cassie seems to have settled in. She's a lot better. So are you. Let's all go down a pub for a while. You should have said earlier. It's almost Cassie's bedtime. Never mind, we'll go another time. No, you go. I've got plenty to do. You sure? Mm-hmm. Okay. I won't be long. Okay. At the risk of getting my ear chewed off, can I say something? Sure. Vanessa has a reputation for being attracted to affluent men. Just keep your eye on it, will you? Well, apparently, you've always had a thing for her. I mean, is it true you stalked her? Yeah, sort of. You said she's been confusing on medication. So forge her signature, sell up. She could downsize with her half of the capital. Tempting. She's never been good with paperwork, but she quit taking her meds. I was 17. She was the most attractive and the most interesting girl in town. I was infatuated, I suppose. Anyway, the postman's son fell out of a tree and broke his leg one evening. The tree was quite close to her bedroom window. Were you up in the tree with him? Hell no. I was scared of heights. But. I was one of three at the base of the tree, and I was marginally the oldest, so I got into most trouble. And you ever been in trouble since? Never. I believe you. Hey, you were right. Compton Acres was definitely worth a visit. <laughs> you should go back when the rhododendrons and azaleas are in flower. I can't wait. I want to see Stourhead and Exbury too. <laughs> so many gardens, not enough time. <laughs> Does Michael ever show an interest in gardens? <laughs> he only appreciates gardens if they help maximise profits. I was probably just part of his business plan. See you later. Hey, I want driving tuition. I hate being stranded. Okay, I'll give you some lessons. I don't want lessons from you. Fine. Well, I used to help my uncle with his landscaping company, and Michael's parents hired us to do some work. I found out later that he planned it just to get to know me. <laughs> Smart move by Michael. I'd like to set up my own business if we ever stay put. You could fill your grounds with more weird and wonderful statues than open up to the public. Can I have a word with you when you have a spare minute? Sure. Maybe later, perhaps. Yep. Yep. So, is um, Michael happy about becoming a dad again? No. 
Another child would just be a hindrance to him now. I can see that. Oops. Exactly. Listen, Rachel is going to sit for us tomorrow. Could you tell her it's cancelled? I mean, she can still come around though if she wants to keep me company. Sure. Why, is uh, Hubby off on business again? Yeah. He has to rush away later to sort out a property deal. Hey, Danielle. Hello. How are you? Well, oh, a bit better than you, I think. <laughs> Good evening everybody, thank you very much for coming. Now I've brought a couple of helpers along with me this evening as they just couldn't wait to see this back in our own village. First on the agenda we're going to be watching a short fan film. This was made for just a couple of thousand pounds and should fit very nicely into the programme. And I'm sure you'll love it. Next we're going to take a short break uh, before the main presentation. Now I can't tell you how excited I am about this. Because as a boy, the first book I ever read from cover to cover was The Hobbit. I hope you enjoy it, guys. Gatter! Ah! Dad used to play. You'll have to give him a game once you've recovered from having triplets. Triplets? <laughs> yeah, I can just imagine the horror on Michael's face. Is this an ex-boyfriend? I never had an ex-boyfriend. Well, Michael was your first love. That's true. Poor cow. How come? I made him not long after I got to high school. Were you his first girlfriend? Not by a long way, unfortunately. That's so out of order. Please tell me you fell in love with his money. No. But his parents had one of the best gardens in Calgary. It's about the same size as the entire village here. Will that do? Not a chance. Still, everyone makes mistakes. Ain't that a fact. You've still got lots to unpack upstairs. Most of it's Michael's. It's hardly taken anything out and he's still got loads in storage. Grouch couldn't wait to unpack all of our stuff. Which makes this a bad sign. I've got to go. It's my turn to do the lunch boxes. So go. Otherwise Grouch won't let you come around again. <laughs> I enjoyed your company. You're a chatterbox. Like you. See ya. Later. <laughs> Bye, Cassie. Good evening, Carla. Hi. You look tired. I don't get much sleep these days. What are you doing here? Some fresh flowers for my mum before I walk my boys. What are you up to? I'm going to plant some bulbs. In a grave? No. I'm going to find a spot in the woods. I didn't know you had children. No, I don't. My boys are canines. They're less hassle than kids. Dogs versus sprogs. There's no contest here. Besides, they're more faithful than men. <laughs> to anyone that feeds them? They'd never stray from me.
so what did he get planned for us huh <laughs> oh really but, uh, yes I, I I'm very interested in uh, another look at the farm hmm uh, just just hang on um call us here now yeah uh, um honey would you mind if I go down to Cornwall this weekend for a, a look at some real estate that that that's a yes oh okay I look forward to it too okay thank you bye <laughs> lunch time oh this morning has flown by who is that that was Vanessa she's a very astute businesswoman oh yeah miss wet t-shirt I suppose it was inevitable what's wrong back off and don't patronize me. Just go and do what you have to do. And if I find out it wasn't business. Hun! Stop! It takes two to sustain a relationship and you don't even pretend anymore. Cassie's enjoying herself. She is. Mm. I'm pretty sure he's having an affair. Barbara Vaughan is married and as faithful as a pussycat. So, do you think I've anything to worry about? Look, I'm the last person you should be asking, really. When it happened to me, it came right out of the blue. So sorry. I put my foot in it again. I'm over it. I should learn to keep my big mouth shut. Well, then I have no one to talk to. Remember, Mr. Misery? <laughs> Did you invite her? No, she just turned up with a case of wine for the party. She does have a heart, you know. Hmm. What's it made of? No. Drink. <laughs> <laughs> I should have met you years ago. Well, you've got me now. They buckled, but I can only afford the land. Or I can go it along with a smaller side. Sell the house. I can find you a buyer faster than you can. <laughs> that had to be Woody. And he's gonna go creeping straight around a car, but I gotta stop him. Decision time had to come. Okay, so she can keep the damn house. What? There's always a way to finance a project. Hi. What are you grinning at? Well, I was just admiring your rather delightful Des Fontania. <laughs> Have you seen one in flower? Not yet. The bears, a long waxy red trumpet with a yellow tip. Spectacular. Correct. Of course. You uh, coming for a run? <laughs> okay. For 10 points, what's that? Mm, too easy. Corkscrew hazel. Coralis contorta. I just bought myself a common hazel. Mm, have you now? 
like a cocker. Lovely scent. Well, if you have time to chat, you could be working on your, I'm loath to call it a garden. Mm. And if you ever vandalize Cassie's statues again, I'll chop your hazelnuts off. Well, you tell your husband to keep his paws off my gnomes. And I want the other ones back. I don't know what you mean. Never mind. Have you seen my back garden recently? <laughs> I had a peek once. Okay, you can open them. <gasps> it's so neat. Do you want any help? In your state. That's okay. You can give me a hand with the final design though, if you like. Count me in. Hi. 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 What the hell is she doing here? Look, take it easy. I don't want you being taken out of here on a stretcher. No, it won't be me needing a medic. Dad. I should have met you years ago. Well, you've got me now. He's leaving her. That's awful. She's pregnant, for God's sakes. If I'm so irrational, how come you want me to have custody? Because I've never been there for Cassie. And you get the house. You always wanted to settle here. And now you can. I hope you're going to be really happy. I really am. From the bottom of my heart. But you and me... It's never meant to be, huh? What about the baby? What about the finances? Whether you want Cassie to finish her education? Look, that doesn't matter right now. Okay, I'll contact you later and we can talk about it when we're both come. I can't deal with you right now, okay? You better disappear. He'll punch your lights out if he gets the chance. I don't want to see that happen, Woody. I am fond of you. Why would he punch me? What have I done? A big favour, as far as I'm concerned. Destroy that video. What are you talking about, moron? What did you just say to me? Huh? How did you hear me, Mr. Perfect? Huh? Stop! Huh? You know, it's good to see that someone's got balls in this family. You won't if you don't piss off. <laughs> I could get a really good price for my place. Would that help? You really do it? Let's go negotiate. It took him a week to get in contact. So what else did he say? <sighs> I can't remember. He's in love with her. If he has any sense, he'll be back. If he'd had any sense, he wouldn't have fallen for Vanessa in the first place. I don't want him back this time. Come on. Think straight. Right. Can you guys look after Cassie for the night? Sure. But why? He's turned his mobile off. And I'm going to sort things out now. Well, don't go around her house. She'll set the bloody dogs on you. Just leave it a couple of days, okay? They're leaving for Cornwall tonight. I need answers. I need to know if we should go back to Canada. Her place is too hard to find. We've set up the sat -nav for me. Mom, are you okay? Yes. But I need you to stay with Woody and Rachel just for tonight. We can put the folding guest bed in my room. Come on, you can help. Cool. Done something so bad. What is it? Promise you won't tell. Not yet. I can't promise anything if I don't know what's going on. I think I'm a criminal. 
I don't know what to do. Close the door. No, I will not close the door, and you're freaking me out. in Scotland. She was laid to rest in a grave on a lonely hillside. I was on tranquilizers at the time, so I may remember her funeral. But I couldn't abandon her. Nothing. I won't let anyone do anything to you. But right now, you have to stay here and rest. <laughs> I have to go. I think I'm close to a breakdown. <sighs> Look, you're exhausted. If you're going to go anywhere, let me drive. <sighs> you being there really wouldn't help. Look, if you go take our car, at least you've driven it before. Okay. Come here. to uh, smell them on your behalf. Sensational. How are you? How am I? I'm fine. How are you? Not so good. I guess I will be a gargoyle from now on. I know that's what you call me. I love goggles, sir. Full of character. Oh, I should never let you go alone. It wasn't your car, Woody. Mm. Nevertheless. So, can I get you something while I'm here? Um, some juice or chocolate? Uh, 
gardening magazine. Maybe call someone on your behalf. I just need a hug right now. Sorry about your car. I don't care about my car. Good Night by Carrie Wilde. Time, in stopping for you, has paused for us. The world becomes a punctuation mark and turns for us and does not turn for you. This was your morning and it turned to dusk. A dot increasingly more black than blue. Not meant for you. Not meant for little ones. For you, the earth, the air, the sea, the sky. This payment of a debt before it's due. Not meant for you, not meant for little ones. This final good night, this final goodbye. Good night, sleep tight, and we will tuck you in. The soil like sand into rectangles runs. I'm uh, sorry for everything. Can you forgive me? I don't know. Well, I uh, guess you got what you want now. Okay. Yeah, it was just a bit of wind. Handsome little guy. Yeah, he's lucky to be alive. So is Carla. Hey. Hi. It's good to see you outside again. So, you decided to stay? Well, I like England, but Michael is the only reason I left home. However... However, you totally fall in love with the place and now you want to stay forever. However... However, you're a conscientious, loving mum and you couldn't bear to uproot Cassie again. However, I have to decide what's best overall. You know, I'm tempted to get on a flight today. You know, maybe I could rent this place out. Maybe I could hire you to manage the house. You'll stay for Christmas, then? My folks are in Hawaii until the New Year, so we'll be here for a few weeks anyway. Have you told them about the accident? I didn't want to ruin their vacation. 
I think we'll stay until spring and enjoy the sights. I've been making a long list of gardens I'm going to take you to. Have you now? It's a very long list. Look, Woody. I don't want Cassie to know about my thoughts just yet. I mean, she's had enough to deal with already. Understood. She's so happy now. You're right. It would be cruel to uproot her. You know, I was so unkind to you. I didn't mean to be such an ogre. Although... Not me. I don't smoke, but we both know a man who does, and he stole my gnomes. That was you! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Look. Something I'd like to say. Hey. You know, I've just been on a hell of a roller coaster. Please don't say anything. What? <laughs> I was just going to say that I've got a sausage and cider casserole in the oven and you're very welcome to join us for supper if you'd like. <laughs> okay, omelette or casserole. That's a tough one. Go on. We can watch DVDs. I believe we made some elderberry wine. You can drink that if you're allowed to. I'm sure a little would be okay. And I'd like that very much. Why don't you all spend Christmas with us? Deal. <laughs> we got a little something for Rachel and Connor anyway. I also have a teeny tiny something for you. Yeah, well, that sounds interesting. 